step is going to be to get this power distribution board which comes from the CX20 mounted onto this frame okay now what I've decided to do is I'm actually going to drill holes in here now to make sure that my power distribution board once I've got it in place where I want it facing as much forward straight forward do bear in mind this flight controller board or housing or whatever is not quite straight and I will straighten that out later I'm going to concentrate on the board for now and I'm going to try and get that as straight as I can straight but to keep it there I'm going to use my famous <laughs> post attack and uh, if you know from previous videos in South Africa we call this press stick I'm just going to use that to just hold that board in place while I eyeball it further I've tried to keep it as straight as possible there and there these are the holes and uh, I want to keep a little area back here open because that is where I want to meet uh, place my GPS mount and I do actually have that yeah but you'll you'll see that in a later video how I mount that I'm probably gonna have to mount it by drilling a couple of holes there but yeah we'll get to that later so that area is open now I am going to use a permanent marker it is black <laughs> so let's hope that we can actually see it let's actually try a little piece here and there you see you can't actually see that I don't know if you can see that on camera it, it, it even w once it's dried it's fairly obvious for me to see so I'm gonna mark my holes with this permanent marker so I can see exactly where they are I'm going to use a three millimeter drill bit one of these high speed drill, drill bits I'm going to use this 3 millimeter uh, drill bit to drill the holes in there and uh, this is fiberglass so it, it, it should be fairly easy to drill the holes in there um, obviously with fiberglass you have to be very careful slow movement don't push it too much you can actually crack the, uh, the fiberglass but I'm going to mark these holes and Yes, we're going to drill those holes, and there we go, we can see one, two, three, four. Let's drill the holes. Alright, what I've done now is just drill four pilot holes with a very small drill, one millimeter drill, just so I can get those uh, centered exactly the way I want them. And next step, I'm going to drill with the three millimeter drill. And there we have it. I actually managed to do, <laughs> to do that on camera for a change. Um, I didn't think that it was uh, going to be possible to do on camera, but there you go. There's hole number one, there's hole number two, three, and four. Now that we have the holes drilled, and um, I like the way they look, they look pretty neat, I'm going to be mounting standoffs just to lift the board that's slightly away from the surface so the bottom of the board doesn't get damaged. And, um, I'm going to be using these brass standoffs. Now, I've got four of them. Now, brass is a metal, and when you use, hold on, let me just get the screws. There's one screw, and there's another one. Let's just get two more. There's one more. All right. I'm going to be mounting these from the bottom, and the screw needs to come through, and then this thing is going to be screwed in on the top now because it's metal on metal we have to use a thread locker use a quality thread locker I'm using the winds thread locker 
which is a South African product, and uh, I don't know if you get it overseas or wherever you guys are. Um, use Loctite or whatever there is available to you guys there. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to push this through from the bottom. That fits through perfectly. And I'm just going to put a dab of thread locker on the top of it. Just a little drop. And then I'm going to turn the brass screw or the, 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 the spacer or standoff. Now, you actually don't even need to turn this that tight. It pretty much grips itself. And there you go. Now, this uh, wind thread locker or nut lock, it's all, as it's also called, is the removable kind. You don't want to use the red hard kind. You're going to damage screws if you ever want to remove them. And this is also vibration and shock resistant. So, yes, it, it, it should hold this whole mounting in its place. All right, there's another one. And that is it. And we are ready to mount the board. That is it. It's quite simple. Right. Our next step is going to be to mount this power distribution board. This is the original CX20 power distribution board. I'm going to keep this as is for now. Because once I've got it mounted, that I've got, uh, mounted onto the standoffs and onto the frame, I have a base to work from. Um, I can then remove and replace and fix and whatever needs to be done. Um, but if I do that beforehand, everything's loose here. It's, it's, it's a mess to work with. Now, before I can uh, start working on that, uh, just a little thing that I need to mention. The holes, the mounting holes, I did enlarge with a, with a drill to 3 millimeter because the screws that I want to use to turn into the standoffs require 3 millimeter. Now, this one, we're just going to work slightly the other way around. I'm first going to put the thread locker into the holes because trying to get that in from the top is a mess. Um, you could, you're fiddling with screws. You'll probably see it never is quite easy to work with when you're working from top down. You don't need a lot of the stuff. It, it pretty it holds on pretty well um, and doesn't release under vibration. Right, and let's just seat that into its spot. There we go. The nice thing with the thread lockers is actually you can also see exactly where your holes and things are. It doesn't block up anything. And let's try and get that in there. Okay, now the first ones I'm just going to turn in lightly. You don't turn these all the way down because you still want a little bit of movement so that you can seat the board properly and align everything. All right, and there you go. That is our power distribution board set. Now I can go ahead and I can remove whatever needs to be removed because now I can see precisely which is the front and which is the back. And um, I can uh, reseat everything because this little receiver board was stuck down here. And I think I'm probably going to stick it down there again. But the double sided tape obviously is a mess. So I'm going to need to put in a new double sided tape. I also want to fix up this little receiver's casing because it's a mess and it's not closing properly. And I don't want to straighten that up. But okay, that's going to be our next little task.